ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker. And he knows this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't see eye to eye with him. And he knows that. But he's an outspoken man and uh, we disagreed almost on everything, <laughs> unfortunately. But, but he has his own stand on what he believes in and we have our own stand on what we believe in. But uh, it is a privilege yet to introduce Mr. Asaduddin Owesi today. Uh, he's a brilliant mind, brilliant mind, uh, you know, and he's a four-time member of parliament representing the Hyderabad constituency. He's the president of the uh, All India Majlis e Ittehadul Muslimin. And as we all know, he's a barrister rhythm from Lincoln's in, in, in London and a man to watch out for politically as well. Would you like to add something? Absolutely. Ornab, like you said, politically, his party is expanding, having made an entry in Bihar, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, very soon a debut in Rajasthan. Legislatively, he's been a staunch critic of the Uniform Civil Code. But Mr. Ovesi's advocates for the abolition of the HUD subsidy given to the Indian Muslims and utilizing the money for the education of Muslim women. However, he also advocates for allowing hijabs in school. So he has a diverse range of views. And uh, whatever his views are in parliament and in courts, wherever he can, in public forums, he's, he speaks about it passionately. One and that's last word on, yes. on, on my friend, yes. uh, Asaduddin. Yeah. I have to tell you that uh, whether you agree with him or you disagree with him, yeah. he is a man of conviction. And yeah. I, more than anything else, I respect him for being a man of his conviction. Absolutely. And I'm sure he'll add diversity to this conversation. I remember, I remember when the law against triple talaq was being debated in parliament, he argued against its criminalization. He never minced his words on the UCC and he has said in the past, he said the Uniform Civil Code is not required in this country. So it will undoubtedly be riveting after hearing the, the, the learned additional solicitor general last to hear his views on the question, has the need for a uniform civil code become an imperative today? Over to you, Mr. Asaduddin Owesi. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Jet Milani, uh, for inviting me to the 17th Ram Jet Milani Memorial Lecture. And since this event is in the memory of Ram Jet Milani, I will honor it by speaking my mind without ifs and buts. Let me start by quoting what the late Ram Jetmalani had said. Uh, to put it into context, yes, I oppose Uniform Civil Court. And uh, anyone who opposes the Uniform Civil Court uh, becomes very unpopular uh, for the BJP uh, people and for all the people who hold the RSS ideology. So let me start by the, by the quote of Ram Jetmalani when he said, if defending an unpopular cause results unpopularity, so be it. Uh, I had many disagreements with, Ms. with the late Mr. Jet Milani, but I did respect him for his integrity. I remember that he expressed regret on endorsing Mr. Modi after he discovered that Modi government was not sincere about its promises on black money. In 2004, Mr. Ram Jet Milani had apologized for having supported POTA and regretted it that it was used to target innocent people. It takes courage to stand by what you believe is right and admit when one is wrong. Uniform civil code is not imperative. I will set out three interconnected grounds for my stand. Firstly, the historical background of UCC in the Constituent Assembly. Secondly, pluralism and fundamental rights. Thirdly, difference between law in books and the law in action. Now, mandatory versus voluntary. Baba Sahib Ambedkar did not see uniform civil code as mandatory. He believed it was voluntary. He wanted a non-religious secular law that is accessible to anyone who does not adhere to any faith. Today, this court already exists. The Juvenile Justice Act, Special Marriage Act, Indian Succession Act already exist. Anyone who does not want to be governed by religious personal laws can be voluntarily governed by these laws. Now, the Prime Minister Modi's own law commission noted in 2018 that UCC is neither necessary nor desirable. The commission was headed by former Supreme Court Justice B.S. Chauhan. He made this observation after public consultation and thorough analysis of existing legislative framework. Now, pluralism is the basis of this country. Uniformity does not mean sameness, and equality does not necessarily entail uniformity. Religion is not merely about worship or rituals. For most Indians, 
religion governs the relationship their understanding of family of property of marriage child rearing etc it creates what one may call a moral universe for its adherents this is not only about rituals that come with marriage but the very meaning of these words is different for hindus muslims christians adivasis and whole host of communities it is not just about whether your marriage is a nikah or a seven feras or i do in a church therefore 1.3 billion people cannot be expected to be governed by a single law to expect this is to attack pluralism pluralism secularism in the constitution can be seen in article 25 26 29 besides 14 19 and 21 this is part of our basic structure this is what abdul ghafur nurani once called a mosaic our conception of a marriage of our family are so vastly different that it is unfair to expect that everyone should abandon it just an, as an example a marriage in islam is a contract as such both parties can set out any condition they wish to set out this includes the wife setting out granular conditions on how the income of the household is spent how the children are raised and the conditions of what happens after divorce in contrast marriage is a sacrament in hinduism the very nature of these things is so different that individuals are likely to think of their obligations and rights very differently it is fair it is not fair to force one to concede their understanding of marriage for another for example in 2016 the supreme court ruled that a wife refusing to stay with her in-laws is cruelty to the husband Therefore Supreme Court granted divorce to the man on this ground in Islam a woman has a right to separate household privacy in the same household our prime minister shri narendra modi has long seen our diversity and pluralism as a problem he sees our distinctions and differences as a major problem to be resolved which is why he believes in one nation one election one tax one law one culture one religion one identity so much so that i recently saw that there is also now one nation and one fertilizer but distinction or differences are not a problem of the constitution this is why article 29 specifically says that any section of indian society has a right to preserve their distinct language script or culture differences are to be celebrated commonalities also have to be celebrated this is too complex a point for mr modi but it is what makes us a great nation india's legal system must reflect the diversity of the country one nation one everything is not something that suits a plural and a diverse nation such as ours this brings me to the next point which is that if there is a uniform civil court muslims will have to give up on the above mentioned distinctions in favor of a uniform civil court this will that will be nothing but a hindu civil court all references to islamic practices will be treated as illegal or unlawful while all hindu practices will be protected under law the best example of this is the hindu undivided family in 2015 and 16 the hindu undivided family tax exemption in income tax costed the indian exchequer exchequer 3064 crores the law commission recommended that this system should be abolished why did the modi government not do it why did advocates of uniformity and equality not campaign for this in kerala hindu undivided family has been abolished has any bjp proponent of ucc ever advocated for the abolition of hindu undivided family tax rebate similarly section 21a under special marriage act protects marriages and inheritance between hindus but the same is not extended to muslims why what we see is that uniformity is only equality for muslims for hindus it is culture and therefore it is an exception to the law there is always a hindu exception to every uniform law in contrast in islam family is a far more complex system property is inherited upon death while sons have obligations to take care of their aging parents their wives do not become part of the joint family or undivided family there is no concept of co-partner or karta every married couple and their children form a distinct family unit separate from the extended family unfortunately uniformity is a synonym for common 
it is not a cinnamon for equality it is not a cinnamon for sameness bjp has used a sleight of hand by confusing uniform with common furthermore equality simply does not mean the erasure erasure of distinct cultural or religious practices that are available to each individual this has significant implications i want to give some examples of this one why are buddhist sikhs adivasi jain etc all club within the hindu marriage act there have been consistent demands from all these groups that they should not be governed by hindu marriage act second why do adivasis have a section 2 exemption under hindu marriage act why have they been demanding sarna court and the right to be identified separately from hindus in the census clearly that their demand does not mean that they are not equals their demand does not mean that hindus are being discriminated against their demand simply means the recognition of their distinct culture a similar case is found for nagaland and mizoram under article 371 which protects their customary rights even within muslims there are distinct legal schools and practices unlike british common law islamic jurisprudence is not based on precedent but on case to case basis the facts of each situation differ and judges often evolve different solutions furthermore depending on your own school of thought or sect you have different principles of interpretation why should all these be subsumed under the same law law in books versus law in action most importantly law is not a vehicle for social reform if it were we would not see 80% of child marriages from hindus isn't there a law against child marriages at least 9 million girls are missing in india as a result of female infanticide from 2000 to 2019 to compare this is slightly lower than the entire population of uttarakhand 86.7% of missing female births are of are of hindus whose population is 79.8% this is despite a law against female in feticide national family health survey data reveals that hindus men who choose to have partners outside of marriage or were in in life in relationship had 2.2 mean number of sexual partners in their lifetime sikhs and christians had 1.9 while buddhists and muslims had 1.7 on average jains had the lowest mean number of 1.1 the national family health survey 5 tried to find what percentage of men had intercourse with someone who was neither their wife or somebody they lived with in the 12 months preceding the survey as many as 7.8% of all participating buddhist men said yes to this question they were followed by sikhs 6% hindus 4% christians 3.8 and muslims 2.6% similarly polygamy is practiced by 1.9% of muslims 1.3% of hindus a difference of 0.6% despite the fact that it is legal for muslims and not for hindus it is highest among tribals and christians again despite the fact that it is not legal for either of these communities the point is simple it is not the law it is the social attitudes those women who have married partners are not protected by law but second wives among muslims are protected and have a right to maintenance according to census the percentage of separated and abandoned women is also least among the muslims 0.67% compared to hindu 0.69% christians it is 1.19% and other religious minority 0.68% there are close to 20 lakh hindu women who are abandoned and separated this number is 2.8 lakh for muslims and 0.9 lakh for christians and 0.8 lakh for other religions if the goal is gender equality then one must focus on education job creation social attitudes national family health survey has demonstrated that with an increase in education and wealth there is an improvement in gender equality for example educated and wealthier women are like to likely to have planned pregnancies they are more likely to take decisions by themselves in conclusion if the goal is to target muslims and ritually humiliate them then uniform civil code is imperative but how far are we going to stretch the meaning of uniformity and equality when we have an hindu exception for everything 
while outlying everything pertaining to Muslims, if despite modern legislation, Hindu men have continued to be bigamous, indulge in extramarital affairs, domestic <coughs> violence, female feticide, etc., then will it, when it stop with the Uniform Civil Court, what is imperative it is to strengthen programs that benefit women, that allow them independent decision making, etc. However, it may require actionable policies rather than empty one nation, one everything slogans. The need of the hour is not impo is not asking for Article 44, but what about Article 47? Will there be a debate on Article 47? Will the great Arnab Goswami have a debate on Article 47? If an Article 47 debate is started, there will be riots on Friday nights in the streets of Mumbai and Bengaluru and Hyderabad. Let me conclude by saying, uh, by, 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 by quoting what the late Ram Jet Melani has, had said. Mr. Ram Jet Melani termed as unnecessary a debate or introduction of Uniform Civil Court in the country and said, what the country needed was uniform justice for all its citizens. I thank you very much, Mr. Mahesh Jait Milani, for inviting <coughs> me uh, to this 17th Ram Jait Milani Memorial Lecture. Thank you very much, Arnab. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I'd like to say a few words in response uh, and, and in summary of what Mr. Uh, Mr. Oasi has said. So, Mr. Oasi, uh, thank you for your challenge, entirely unnecessary. Uh, Article 47, which says that the state must raise the level of nutrition, must improve the standard of living and improve public health. I invite you right now to a debate in the future, which I shall hold, to discuss Article 47 and on, how on, the country on, and on, all political on, parties need hold, to work hold, together hold, in that direction. I, I, I would please, like to, I would like to continue Arnav, because Arnav, I would like to continue. Please, I would like to continue. Please hold on. Please, please, I, please. I, give, I need to respond Arnav, to some me, of your points. Give, give me 20 seconds. Give me, give me. Give, give me no, 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 you can do it afterwards. I'll give me 20 seconds. Give me 20 seconds. Arnab, you must read Article 47 completely, not where it suits you and you stop it. The Constitution of India also talks about the state shall endeavor to bring about prohibition of intoxicating drinks and drugs. Please also say that, Arnab. Yes. Please continue. You can now praise me or criticize me. Thank you. Yes. Now, 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 now. If you, if you allow, if you allow me to, if you allow me to properly respond to you and see, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rovesi, it has been some time since I have had the opportunity to prove you wrong on multiple issues, and and therefore either you prove me wrong or I prove you wrong. But we should have an occasion to to talk to each other. But, but Mr. Oasi, I need to just summarize, and, and this is not a conversation between you and me, it's a much larger conversation that we need to have in this country. My view, however, in summary of your views, is that you are mixing traditions and customs which are fully allowed with legal provisions when disputes reach the court. And anyone with an elementary knowledge would perhaps say that that distinction should not happen. You know, my, I, uh, the view of others would be that the Uniform Civil Code is not about killing diversity. It's about bringing consistency so that no one religion, no one gender, and no one community is held back. How one practices their faith is not affected, but that law applies, that the law applies to them. And when you mentioned the, the Hindu undivided family, please also keep in mind economic benefits that arise from provisions of the Hindu undivided family would have to be given up if there is a uniform civil code. So you should welcome that as well. However, since this is not an occasion for a for a one to one debate, I think both of us should hold ourselves back and I look forward to the next time when when because it appears to me it appears to me that you have not been intellectually challenged enough on other platforms. And I assure you, I assure you that I shall as and when we meet. But surely Mr. Ovesi is not saying today, Mahesh, that, that the drafters of our constitution embedded Article 44 in our constitution to kill our customs. Article 44 says that the state shall endeavor to secure in the territory of India a uniform civil code. It's about finding a harmony between customs and modernization to empower our society. So that would be a different perspective. But I think 
This is the point where we shall stop. That is the that this is, is the, the point where we that, shall stop. That is the rhetorical, Mr. Ovesi. <laughs> but we, we'll, we'll deal with it at the end of the we, But but it's been enjoyable yes, to listen course. to him. It's always a pleasure. To always have a great pleasure to listen Ovesi to him. Ovesi on any show. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, Mr. Asaduddin Ovesi, for joining us in this memorial lecture. Thank you. Uh, you know, which is in honor of the one and only Ram Jait Malani, who is a binding force. We all are bound by our mutual regard and respect for him. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.